Alrighty guys, I'm ready. I got my suitcase. Oh. Alrighty. Garrett, Taylor, I'm ready to go along with you to San Diego. I can't wait to just spend a good amount of time there. You know, like, we're not even going to spend a, a day. We're going to spend a week after we've been talking about San Diego for a while, right? 12 seconds later. What happened? What? What? We're leaving already? Get my bags? Okay, I'm going. What's going on you guys? James here with another real recap and review for week three of Love is Blind season seven. If you've already seen week three by now, episodes 10 and 11, then you understand that intro because they spend like no time in San Diego, but hey, we're gonna get into all that and so much more. Now, if it's your first time here at the channel, Guys, welcome to Real James, where I love talking about movies, TV, and all the news in between. And if you're returning, God bless you guys. I'm so glad you're here, and y'all know how we get down. We're going to start with a spoiler-free recap and get into a spoiler-filled discussion because, I mean, these are two episodes, but there's some tea, okay? There's a, actually a lot of tea in these two episodes, especially episode 10, but there will be spoiler warnings if you haven't already watched week three at that point of course go ahead and subscribe to the channel and stay subscribed because you're going to want to come back and revisit this when you watch it over the weekend there's so much to get into but like i just mentioned we're in week three which means next week it's weddings the finale episode 12 who's ready <laughs> i am because i've got some predictions which i want to drop next week too and i think they'll come true i'm fairly confident i know who's going to get married this season but we'll see guys let's begin now at least with my spoiler free thoughts on week three which of course is episodes 10 and 11 and feel free to get loud in the comments below and let me know which y'all agree with and which you don't because i gotta say all right i've been critical of the pacing of these episodes this season you know we had some really rough moments where certain segments just sort of lingered in week one week two was better but again there were some weird hiccups week three though episode 10 flew by i'm telling y'all that was the best paced episode of love is blind in a little while okay the editing was on point everything was gravy with episode 10 and now i really want some turkey preferably a seasoned turkey but i will say it was episode 11 where the technical hiccups came back again now the editing i hated i'm so sorry guys it was so choppy and i could not really get into and immerse myself into moments and conversations then there were awkward zooms and i'm left thinking okay who's who's focusing the cameras why are we getting very weird transitions and it just sort of piled up and episode 11 ends up ma material wise lots to talk about actual like presentation i'm begging them just to, to listen to me and other youtubers who are covering love is blind especially in the u.s the editing should be more consistent. Just have a template and go from there. Because what y'all did in episode 10, awesome. Episode 11, I don't know. I've, there's so much to talk about. But again, the technical hiccups were just too much for me to overlook. And then you get down to the music again. If y'all had a dollar for every time I talk about the music being so on the nose in Love is Blind, you would have $153 at this point. That's a really specific number. But we get a couple of tense moments in episode 11, right? And I can't get into specifics because we're in the spoiler-free section, but I will say I was digging it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is actually a very good moment of reality TV. Only for the music to be like, you crush my heart one last time. And I'm like, what in the Imagine Dragons is this, okay? I don't understand why we have to get so corny. Just play a basic instrumental, a tense instrumental, happy and peppy instrumental. Why use licensed music like this? What happened to episode one where we used Ain't No Mountain High Enough and it worked? But no, instead, now we get back to the bad music selection. So, did not love it in episode 11 specifically. But I will say, hmm, week three? Listen, Love is Blind season seven is getting better week to week at this point, okay? Week two is still better to me than week three but week three is way better than week one for me because there are so many very dramatic moments especially with a certain couple whose abbreviations are <laughs> yeah but i don't want to spoil anything now again this is now the moment where we're going to transition into the spoiler filled recap so again if you haven't watched episodes 10 and 11 hit the big red button below subscribe to the channel tap on that bell so you'll get notified for my finale recap next week and the reunion after that Hit that thumbs up button for your boy because I really appreciate coming through 
all the support that I've been seeing on the channel for Love is Blind and all my recaps and reviews for film and TV. So I appreciate you guys. God bless you guys. And I can't wait to see you when you come back. But for those <laughs> who've been strapped in, and at probably the time of you watching this, it's very early in the morning, so I won't tell your bosses, okay? I won't tell them you're watching episodes 10 and 11. But it's time to get into the spoiler-filled recap. And I want to start with who we have left, because at this point, couples are dropping like flies. <laughs> and uh, I said dropping like flies, and I immediately thought of a dumb joke to make about Steven dropping his... Never mind, you know, we're going to get right into who's left at the beginning of week three. We got Taylor and Garrett, Ashley and Tyler... Marissa and Ramses, Hannah and Nick, and Alex and Tim. Not for long. Anyway, <laughs> let's start talking about the days leading up to the wedding. Because, guys, we're not weeks out. We're days before weddings. So I want to check in with our couples. And we're going to start with Ashley and Tyler. Why, you ask? Because we were left on a cliffhanger in week two, where in episode nine... Tyler reveals, I got three kids, but they're not mine, but I donated my sperm. It not really, it didn't go the legal way, I just had a friend who wanted to help her and her wife. And Ashley's like, this is important and pertinent information you should have revealed in the pods. Now, I predicted last week that this week, Ashley would walk away from Tyler. But did that happen? Let's see. Now, of course, Tyler's shocking reveal is still hurting Ashley's heart because she feels lied to and she says I'm disappointed in you but I don't hate you and then Tyler continues to reveal that hey it was a very close friend of mine her and her wife wanted to have this baby well babies plural at this point but they couldn't afford a sperm donor and then Tyler says something that I was like all right that hold on hold on he says and I quote I thought that was God telling me to help someone else Hold up now. Um, yes, we're called to be generous and love our neighbor. However, you might have taken the love part so literally because this is <laughs> to a certain degree, right? Um, if you didn't go through a sperm donor or go to a sperm bank and you just donated your sperm, how does that happen? I'll wait. Chris is probably going to make a joke about it in his video, so I'll let him talk about it because you know we don't get down like that at least too much in detail here on the channel <laughs> but you guys can put the pieces together right i'm just saying now of course ashley is clocking that she's like listen you donated it right mm, not great which is probably a source of her frustration with him and also a little bit of her reservation with tyler but tyler said Whew, it felt good and i'm thinking phrasing homie stop it you're on thin ice with ashley right now According to Tyler, though, the kids just don't know what he looks like. Remember, two girls and a boy, if I'm not mistaken, are what he technically has, but it's not really his. It's, the, you know, his best friend. Now, it does feel like, to me, he's far removed from the situation. So I'm really hoping another shoe does not drop in this situation to where we find out that man owes some sort of child support. That would be so rough, and it would hurt me because I still like Ashley and Tyler. It just, Tyler... Why are you always lying, though? Don't do that, you know? So Ashley says, I've come to a decision. Hold the phones. I'm willing to continue and try with you. And no matter what you do, I still want to be with you. But then she says, mm, now, that was your one and final chance, all right? Next time, you don't pass go and you don't collect $100, okay? So she wants to build a life with Tyler. However, I'm still not convinced because there's something, I think, in the back of her mind. And she's probably thinking... Eh, but he lied to me on a really big issue, okay? So we'll have to pay attention to Ashley and Tyler. But now let's move on to Nick and Hannah, your favorite couple. Yeah, I'm pointing at you. This week, they attended an engagement photo shoot that was very meh. You know what I mean? Like the whole moment didn't have any impact. They took their photos and I'm thinking, are we just going to ignore what happened last week though? You know, where Nick was getting bullied basically by Hannah and Nick clapped back and Hannah said, yeah, whatever. And then Hannah's brother came out of nowhere. But... I have a feeling that things are not too well in the Nick and Hannah camp, and maybe my premonition is correct here, but they go on a date, you know, one of their last remaining dates at this point, and it's an obstacle course date. And I gotta ask, what is up with them and their adrenaline filled dates? Like bungee jumping, obstacle course, uh, what, what's next, huh? You're just gonna free fall out the plane? <laughs> oh wait, no, that was Ashley and Tyler, but anyway. Right after the date, they sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one moment, and then Hannah says, Nick, your icks are becoming really funny to me. And it kind of feels like a weird backhanded compliment, 
Now listen, in the effort of full disclosure, I am so far removed from even having hope for Nick and Hannah because Nick doesn't deserve to be bullied like this. Sure, he's not like doing all of the right things, but he's not doing anything that I feel like warrants all of this bullying by Hannah. However, Nick says, I'm ready to get married, and I'm thinking, Lord, how? And then Hannah says, you know, I still have some concerns and stuff, so I'm starting to think, is Hannah ready to get married? He should ask her that question. But as the episodes go by, it just feels like Hannah is consistently picking on Nick's personality and characteristics and wants to mold him into a perfect husband. Newsflash, Hannah, there is no perfect person in this world, right? For me, I know that I have been taught that we all fall short of the glory of God, right? So, come on, Hannah, just come on, no one's perfect. So Nick wants to sort of linger in this moment, so on the same date, he says, I kind of feel that you are viewing me as a level below you, and I want to be treated like an equal. So Nick's frustrations are beginning to bubble to the surface, and you know what? She is treating him like a non-equal. I don't even know if that was the proper word there. But Hannah says, and this is a direct quote, you'll start being treated as an equal when you contribute as an equal, end quote. Lord, Lord have mercy, because I, when I heard that, I literally paused it and thought, Nick is just going to leave right now. He's going to leave in this exact moment and say, I am out of here and I'm going back to my parents. That Ropa Vieja is too good. But no, man, no, that is not okay, Hannah. You don't, what are you saying? But we'll get back to Nick and Hannah. Let's go on to the most unproblematic couple of this show so far. And that is Garrett and Taylor because they're taking a calligraphy, cal calligraphy? Lord, I can't even say this correctly. It's like me trying to say Kev on stage. You know, I know you guys probably saw those Instagram videos come on stage, but calligraphy style classes are cute, especially because letters for them both were very big in the pods. So they go on an unproblematic date. Nothing's wrong. They want to have a letter writing station at their wedding. And that is so cute. Seriously, that is so adorable. I think it's very personal too, right? Garrett reveals though at the end of the date, something that made me raise my eyebrows that his mom apparently does not want to be a part of the wedding. Dawn. What is you on? You don't want to be a part of the wedding? Like, your son is in love. Your son's fiance looks great in terms of like her enjoyment. She, she wants to be here, right? So if she's all in and he's all in, why ain't you all in? Hmm. This might go back to a theory I had on Sharonda's live stream this past Saturday, Pay Our Waits, where I find it interesting, and this is me going off on a little tangent here, that Garrett in the pods asked for Taylor's last name, and Taylor was not willing to reveal it, and then he was a little worried, knowing that, oh my gosh, he's probably diverse, and I don't know how my parents are going to feel about that. Now, he didn't say that last part, but I know that's what he was thinking, because he mentioned, oh, we might have some problems, I can see uh, moving forward if we decide to get engaged. They go to visit Garrett's parents, and we find out that Garrett's mom has been having side convos with her son, that she's not about all this. According to her, it's the pace of the experiment, but if you mean pace uh, in terms of, you know, Taylor being Asian, then I think if I'm going to assume here, it seems like Garrett's mom is a little close-minded. I'll say that. That's what it feels like to me. But who knows? Let's go ahead and move on to the meeting friends and family moment because we got some of them and it is Tim and Alex. Actually, wait, it's only one moment. Yeah, Alex meeting Tim's parents. So Tim is called Drake by his parents. Now I know SEO purposes, that must be so funny. Just putting in Drake in that person's last name is gonna come up as so many, I guess, posts about Drake getting owned by Kendrick Lamar. But anyway, Alex's microphone in this instance uh, felt suffocated by her jacket and I made that note because if y'all hear it, it sounds really weird and I was distracted. <laughs> I'm sorry. But other than that, um, there's nothing really between Alex meeting Tim's parents that made me raise my eyebrows. It was Tim having a conversation with his parents that made me think, uh oh, trouble in paradise. Tim tells mom and dad that he doesn't feel in sync with Alex all of the time and that, well, their jokes, uh, he doesn't love them. And in the physical touch, he's not about it because we know that Tim don't like to cuddle. So a lot of this seems very odd. And I'm like, Tim, what are we setting up here? Well, thankfully for y'all at home that are watching this video, we won't have to wait for long to figure out the aftermath because it's time to check in with Tim and Alex. And whew, 
Oh, mamma mia. Oh, boy. Uh, the camera cuts to Tim and Alex's moment, and it seems like she's sitting at this little countertop by herself, and Tim just walks into the living room with the coldest shoulder. And now I know Alex and Tim had an argument off camera because that's the MO in season seven. Everything happens off camera, and we're left to fill in the blanks based on what they say. So Tim does tell Alex, let me know when you're ready to talk. And I'm thinking, oh boy, this is this man's upset. But Alex doesn't seem about it either, right? She seems a little, eh, I don't love this, okay? Oh boy. Uh, so Alex said, I know we're not doing this while I'm eating. I haven't eaten all day. But Tim is insisting. So Alex brings her food to the couch. And here's where things go way south. Tim reveals that once the cameras cut in an earlier moment where Alex met his parents, Alex chose to go to sleep. And he's not happy about her doing that because... His parents allegedly drove 10 hours to meet Alex. I hope that they drive a Honda and it hopefully isn't a quarter of Civic because 10 hours in this economy, ooh, that's a drive. So Tim is also apparently upset with Alex because she hasn't been communicating well with him. But Alex says, I, I, no, 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 I know you're busy and I was busy too, but I did respond to your text. Alex then defends herself some more and says that, Listen, I'm going to provide a rebuttal to your story here. I was speaking with your parents for four hours, count them, one, two, three, four, and decided to take a one hour nap. I'm not going to lie. In the grand scheme of things, that's not the worst thing in the world because I'm sure Tim's parents could just take that time to, I don't know, debrief. So I was very confused with Tim here. And adding to that confusion is that Tim never told Alex that he was upset with her at the time, so she felt she did nothing wrong. And at this point, I'm thinking, guys, when is the levy gonna break? It happened actually in the same conversation. So Tim continues to add to this spicy moment and says, you know what? As he's leaning back and getting all dramatic and says, I don't wanna move forward with you. And I'm thinking, hold up, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think Alex was even there because she seemed shocked too. So Tim continues to punch down on Alex and say, I actually don't even want to see you again. I hope you all want to see each other at the reunion because we need the tea. Lachaise, you better follow up. So he's being really rude, right, guys? It's not just me. Tim is being incredibly rude to Alex in this moment. And Alex is defending herself, kind of trying to punch back. But at the end of it all, it upset her. I know. Now, was she always perfect, too? No, she probably called him out by his name in Mexico, and I didn't think that was right. But it seems like Tim is blowing this out of proportion a little bit. Unless Tim's parents were like, hey, Drake, mm, I don't like her. And if that's the case, goodness gracious, that maybe is why he called it off. But part of me feels like this is just Tim. So as you can tell, of course, we lose that couple for at least the remainder of this season. Tim and Alex are donezo, right? So let's move on to a couple that's still around, like Marissa and Ramses. So the camera does cut to them very quickly on their balcony in what seems to be the moments following their previous conversation. Y'all remember about the birth control and stuff like that. So Marissa's concerned, of course, following that conversation and doesn't understand why he is so against just practicing safe relations and Ramses sounds like okay now I'm having doubts myself and it's just so funny how this happens after their intimacy conversation right I'm telling y'all no foundation is there in the relationship but I digress they get into a moment where Marissa's projecting the other way she says okay let's wedding planning time time to plan our wedding Marissa says I don't even want an aisle at our wedding honey where are you walking down and she says I just want everyone to be together so are we all walking down the aisle together? I, I don't understand that. Um, Marissa then says, Ramses, do you have any doubts, though, about our wedding? And he starts his response with, um, no, no, no. Now, I'm very much particular about the word choices I use, not just with my partner, but of course with everyone as well. Words matter, right? So if you were feeling confident, wouldn't you say, yeah, like, yeah, of course, hon. I'm right there with you. We're in the fire together, huh? Let's do it. No, he says, um. He's about to um his way out of this relationship, honestly. Um, I don't know. I'm not convinced, y'all. But we'll get back to Marissa and Ramses because I do want to get into probably one of the bigger moments in terms of size and scale for this week, which was the contestants' costume party because y'all know Love is Blind is messy. Those producers are looking for any way to throw a monkey wrench 
into every relationship. They bring in past contestants in the pods, some who didn't make it out, of course, and everyone's together at this costume party and they're dressing like flappers, I think someone mentioned, and like old, like gangsters. I don't know, y'all. It was confusing. But as we're actually heading into the party and following some couples, we hone in on Garrett and Taylor. And Taylor tells Garrett, if I see you with any woman from your past, you need to shut that down at this party. And I'm thinking, what the heck happened off camera? Oh my gosh. So the reason she said this is, and I'm going to give you the spark notes. Garrett saw a text message earlier in the morning from his ex-girlfriend, and he says that he just reacted to it and gave it a like. And I'm thinking, okay, Taylor, now I know why you're mad at Garrett. But, you know, again, that's old news, right? <laughs> sort of. We're going to talk about that in a little bit in more detail. But next up is Tim and Alex showing up to the party separately. Like, duh, of course they're going to show up separately. They just got done having a huge falling out that resulted in the ending of their engagement. So Ashley decides to have a side conversation with some of the girls, too, and brings up Tyler having kids. But it was so unprompted. And I'm thinking, okay. What's in your gold chalice, Ashley? Because nobody asked about this, but some kind of found out. I think Alex found out or something like that too. It just felt really messy to me in that moment because I'm so sure Tyler didn't want her to go and just without any given notice say, hey, yeah, my fiance has babies, but they're not his. You know, but are they his? I don't know. And then Monica shows up to the party without Steven, of course, because he's probably playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, who knows? But Monica reveals that she did call Steven after they broke up, and they spoke on the phone for two hours. Now, this next part, I'm very proud of her for saying she says she will not be giving him a second chance. We are all clapping and applauding Monica, because if she gave him another chance, listen, Monica, he told you he's a cheater in the pods. He cheats on you outside the pods. He's gonna do it again, okay? So, good on Monica. Steven never showed up. However, now it's time to, whoop, spin the block on this Garrett and Taylor situation. Now, Garrett and Taylor are having a conversation with Tyler and Ashley about Garrett's little mess up with his ex. Now, here's where things get juicy. And I'm actually kind of sad because it's Garrett and Taylor and I like them. So, Garrett reveals on accident, <laughs> because, you know, I guess his liquid courage uh, made him say something he didn't want to reveal. He says that I lied to Taylor. I, I actually responded to her. He responded to his ex, y'all. My goodness. He didn't simply like the message. He actually gave a response. Garrett says he didn't do this, um, you know, to try to flirt and have a good time. Instead, he reveals that he told his ex, I'm engaged and we cannot speak like this. We should not be sending each other messages. Homeboy, you should have said, I never want to have a conversation with you again if i see you in public with my wife to be maybe a wave maybe not actually but this can't happen anymore goodbye block the contact delete good get out but no he entertained her while i do believe that garrett actually said what he said that doesn't help taylor because taylor is even more upset now and she walks away crying as Ashley follows her in support. Uh, I was actually kind of confused because Taylor said she wanted to be alone and then Ashley followed her. But maybe there's girl's code. I don't know. I don't know. And essentially, that's when that moment ends and we get back to the other guests, right? So Bowden shows up. Bodie, you remember the dude who made the noises when he left the pods with Marissa? But his eyes were so very wide when talking with Marissa. And I don't know if y'all caught that, but I did. And I'm starting to think, what are they pouring in these chalices? What is happening at this party? And for some reason at this party, Ashley was a part of like the most messiest conversations. So Hannah and Ashley have a talk about, well, Hannah and Nick's sex life, and it is so awkward. Hannah's frustrated with Nick in this department, apparently, and she says things that I will not repeat because it is not appropriate. <laughs> Y'all can watch it. Now, what doesn't frustrate Hannah at this point is a mystery to me. Girl. You sound like you want to leave this man, so you should leave him. Nick, she's a bully. Maybe you should leave her too. We'll get there. So Nick apparently decides to have a conversation with Katie. Here's some context though. Back in the apartments before the costume party, Hannah's instigating and she's like, yo, Nick, if you could talk to anybody there and get some closure, who would you choose? And Nick says, Katie, that didn't make Hannah very happy. 
Katie reveals at the party to Hannah and to others that Nick is much cuter in person and apparently has been saying this several times throughout the night. So of course, Hannah's feeling a little insecure here and upset. And the music that they use during Nick and Katie's conversation is petty. It's this like romantic instrumental. It's like an acoustic guitar. <laughs> and I'm thinking, is Ernesto from Coco going to come around the corner and sing Remember Me? I don't know. But Nick is genuinely not engaging in a certain way with Katie that would lead me to believe that he still has feelings for her. Nick is hyping up Katie like you're a good person and then Katie says, eh, eh, hold on now, I'm gonna drag you a little bit because Nick, your maturity level is not where it needed to be for me and that's why even though I had you at number one and Nick had her at number one at some point, that it, that's why it didn't work out. So yeah, Katie kind of dragged Nick a little bit but listen, Hannah doesn't care, right? Hannah doesn't look thrilled from afar. She's ready to literally fire lasers out of her eyes. And right at Nick, too. Not at Katie. That's her best friend, apparently. <laughs> so we end this moment with a Garrett and Taylor moment, and Taylor's livid with him and says, this is our first huge argument a day before we're flying to San Diego to meet my family. It's terrible timing. Seriously, Garrett, what in the world? If I got that text message like he did, I would have went straight to my girlfriend and said, hey, 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 hey. I don't know what this is. I don't want it. All right. I'm with you. I love you. Oop, delete. Block. <laughs> Just saying. She did say, hey, if we don't get on this flight together to San Diego, then we're not getting married. And then Garrett says, whew, all right, listen, I recognize I'm the problem in this situation. And in this moment, you are Garrett. However, at the end of this episode, I'm thinking I really want them to go to San Diego. And they're hyping up San Diego, which is my source of frustration where they're hyping up San Diego and the moment was so darn short. So... Let's get into Garrett and Taylor going to San Diego. They reveal that they got on that plane after all, and in the testimonial videos, Taylor reveals, hey, we're here, but I'm still hurt at what Garrett did. Garrett does meet Taylor's family and friends, but it was revealed to us in this selfie style vlog video, so y'all know that quality was pretty bad for TV. And I just, I understand Taylor's parents did not want cameras in their house. It sounds like they didn't want cameras at all until this moment. So I'm thinking, y'all couldn't just let the cameras in and they actually film it in high quality and have a decent sit down moment. But I guess that did not fly either. However, Garrett and Taylor both seemed very happy at this dinner. And then we leave San Diego and that's it. It was such a short segment, y'all. And I was baffled. What was the thought process going into this? Unless they just didn't want to pay for another crew to stay in San Diego? I don't know. So we come back to Washington, D.C., and Garrett has dinner with Taylor and Taylor's mom. Now, the editing here really stinks because I didn't know they were in D.C. until they literally said it. Like, the establishing shots, y'all, I've been to San Diego. I've never been to Washington, D.C. I don't know it that well, right? So I couldn't tell where they were at until they said it. But Taylor's mom apparently reveals here, hey, I had to convince your father, Taylor, to even buy into this engagement in the whole process. So Taylor's mom is at least rooting for Garrett and Taylor, and it seems like the father's on board too, right? Again, a very short segment, so I don't know where they're at, and there was no one-on-one -on -one moment with Taylor's mom and Garrett. The lack of one-on-one -on -one moments with family members in this season, it just, it's crazy to me. So now let's pivot to Tyler and Ashley, and they go on this cute go-kart date, and it seems really fun, but I won't lie, Ashley could not turn into the chicane quick enough, and Tyler wins. At least that's what it looked like. Look at me throwing out my Formula One terms. But Ashley says, hey, no matter what, bro, I want to reaffirm, I'm with you. And Ashley says, we're going to get married, but I need you to know you get that one chance and one chance only. So she continues to sort of hit home on Tyler like, hey, from this point on, you better tell me everything. And if you got three more babies out there, I better know. Because at that point, Ashley, you might as well just walk away. But that was the end of their little short segment. We're going to peek in to see what Marissa and Ramses are up to. Ramses is filling out their marriage certificate, and Ramses, in true Ramses fashion this season, sort of has a dumb moment where he forgets Marissa's birthday. Listen, homie, you better have that in memory, in writing, in your calendar, on your phone. You don't want to ask your fiancé, when is your birthday again? Oh, mamma mia. So now, let's go ahead and get into Nick and Hannah, because it gets juicy, y'all. Hannah is apparently pressing Nick about his convo with Katie at the party. And Nick is sitting there with the shirt unbuttoned, his Henry Cavill chest, right? And says, but, yo, nothing happened. And I'm thinking, yo, Nick, I'm with you on this one. Hannah, you're tripping. Hannah was the one to instigate Nick and sort of want him, like, hey, you want to have a conversation with Katie? 
If you didn't want him to have a conversation with Katie, maybe you should have told him. So Nick says, and I quote, if Katie's your best friend, why don't you just ask her what happened? And I'm going to be honest, I have no idea how Hannah is calling Katie her best friend. Maybe she's a little tipsy. I don't know, bro, because that was wild to me. Does Katie feel that way? Who knows? But Hannah gets even more upset as the conversation lingers and tells Nick things that I think are really kind of offensive to him. And I felt bad for Nick here. She says, I taught you everything in you know, and I even turned you from a boy into a man. Girl, what is up with your disrespectful comments? It's just ridiculous. Why are you doing this to him? Nick, why are you even still there? So Nick is not having it. He's really put off, but Hannah decides to pivot and says, hey, you look really hot right now, tries to kiss him, they do kiss, it seems like they've made up, but Nick still is not having it, he seems upset. I am glad he stood his ground, but here's where he couldn't stand his ground, when Nick meets Hannah's friends. This date was terrible. Nick and Hannah are arguing before her friends walk in, so that's part of the course for them, but once Hannah's friends get there, they begin to actually ask Nick a lot of tough questions and sometimes are unnecessarily grilling him, which is not what Hannah's parents did. So y'all know Hannah cheesing during this whole moment. <laughs> Man. But the minute that they began arguing again, Nick and Hannah were just like kind of jawing. Hannah's friends, at least one of them, gave this awkward look, and I'm like, yeah, I feel you on that, because this is a really awkward moment. But then Hannah's friends said, you know, no, we're taking our gloves off, too. And they start getting on my nerves. I'm sorry, y'all. That was really blunt, right? I don't know them personally. But Hannah and her two friends were getting on my nerves in this moment, because it was a three-on-one attack on Nick. Nick didn't get a word in, couldn't get a word in, and decided, listen, I, I love you, Hannah. What are we doing? But Hannah, listen, I do not think she's been very fair and here she is being more unfair to her fiance so after that moment we eventually do get back to hannah and she's with her mom in the apartment sitting having a one-on-one -on -one conversation and of course hannah says something that made me frustrated hannah tells her mom and mom nick this doesn't match me intellectually or in any area of my life nick bro you better be a runner and a track star. Get out of this relationship as fast as you can. It just, it sounds like at this point, Hannah's ready to call it off, but she almost kind of likes being in this position where she can punch down on Nick. It's a very weird dynamic. But you know what's not weird and out of the ordinary? It's time for our wedding and tuxedo shopping moments, guys. All right, let's begin with the wedding dress shopping because there's much more than the tuxedo fitting. Hannah, of course, does not show up to the wedding dress shopping. I say of course, but in the moment, I was actually kind of shocked she didn't. Um, she gone, right? She is out of there. There's no way they're lasting. But Marissa and everyone else, Marissa, Taylor, Ashley, they're there. And they're ready to try on some dresses. So Marissa made sure not to bring the one friend that was side-eyeing Ramses, of course, at this wedding dress fitting and brings her mom as well. And, of course, Marissa's mom brought the energy way down. Just sort of, again, going after Ramses, and I'm like, just give it up, please. But let's kind of break down the dresses here. Now, I am a man, so y'all tell me in the comments if you disagree or if maybe I'm missing something. But Ashley's first dress was really nice. Now, Ashley's second dress, she liked it better, but I thought the first dress was nicer. Hey, if she likes it, we love it, right? So I'll just, hey, she's rocking with that second dress. Cool. It still looked okay, right? But I thought the first dress looked nicer. Now, Marissa's dress, her first dress, she walks out and she looks in that mirror and says, don't love it. She doesn't even like it. She's definitely not going to have it. So eventually tries on the second dress and she loves it. Absolutely loves it. And I think I saw Marissa's mom smile. <laughs> A miracle. And then we get to Taylor's dress fitting moment. And Taylor's first dress I thought was really nice and simplistic in a good way. However, Taylor's mom just said it boldly. I'm not 100% sold on this dress. So Taylor's like, all right, mom, <laughs> let's go try a second dress. It was also a nice dress for Taylor. The shoulders are unique, different, a little like, you know, kind of like sag off a little like a ribbon or something. Um, not something I see often, I guess. Uh, but Taylor's mom says this is the one and Taylor loves it. So hey, I'm glad they all found dresses that they liked. What about the guys though, right? Tuxedo fitting. <laughs> this moment sucked. 
Pardon my French, okay? This was the shortest tux fitting segment to date, and all of the guys were there. Am I wrong on that? This was the shortest one to date, all right? My goodness, this was terrible. Literally, I have no notes. We virtually spent zero time with them. So it's time to get into the home stretch, you guys, because Hannah and Nick are meeting again in the apartments, and, well, this is the conversation we've all been waiting for. So Hannah does what Hannah's gonna do. Has a notebook with her, literally a notebook, she's just unhinged, and rattles off reasons why Nick isn't for her. And all Nick is doing in this moment is saying, like, like, I love you. What is happening right now? And Nick just continues to get bullied. But Hannah tries to flip it around and says, hey, in her testimonial interview at least, she says, I felt that Nick was manipulative and he was worried about how he was gonna look in his appearance if he didn't go to the tux fitting. I mean, we don't know what was said, so I won't comment too much on that. But Hannah tells Nick straight up after that, we're not gonna get married. And Nick is feeling bad. Hannah has no remorse. Like, she's got no empathy in this situation. And I'm like, man, Nick, I feel bad for him. He looks like he's about to cry. And then Nick says one thing, that probably made a lot of y'all really sad and says, Hannah, I'll always be thinking of you and you'll always be in my heart. But then Hannah follows that up with, I think I'm just done trying. Girl, go away already. Just fly away because this is really annoying now. It seems like Hannah is upset at Nick for not being perfect. And I don't think that's a good reason at all. I, I really, do any therapists talk about this show? I'm curious to hear what therapists have to say about their dynamic. So we're back to the final dates before wedding day, you guys. Let's start with Marissa and Ramses. They have a hot tub date. <laughs> oh boy, that didn't go well. Ramses reveals that his Guyanese family won't be at the wedding and he's sort of okay with it because they were at his first wedding and he doesn't want any sort of carryover from his first wedding. <laughs> I'm thinking, homie, just why, why are you doing this? You're starting to plant seeds of doubt now, especially for Marissa. But Marissa says, listen, I need you, Ramses, to do something for my mom at the wedding. Something sentimental. You just do something for her. And Ramses is already, he's saying things without saying it. He's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> he just doesn't want to do it, guys. He's already traumatized by Marissa's mom. But Marissa says, okay, outside of that, I think, Ramses, you need to be doing more for the wedding. So it sounds like Ramses has been detached. So I'm starting to think. Is this man starting to get cold feet in a hot tub? Who knows? But Ramses says, I'll keep that in mind. And after he says that, he smacks Marissa's behind. Homie is all about the physical and nothing about the emotional. Hey, Marissa, you should have probably ran a little while ago, but my goodness. So now let's get into Ashley and Tyler's final date and they go skydiving because apparently Ashley said, I will always go skydiving the day or two before my wedding with my husband to be. It's a cute date, honestly, and there's a nice setup afterwards, um, but I just don't understand why there were so many jump cuts during their one-on-one -on -one conversation as they're eating together, right? I mean, what in the Captain America Civil War is going on? Y'all remember that opening scene in Civil War? It's a great movie, but so many different cuts. And I'm thinking, all right, when are they gonna get kind of like into the serious talk? And Ashley said something that wasn't very serious on the topic of making babies together. She says that you don't have to feel any of the pain, Tyler. I'm going through all of it. All you gotta do is donate your sperm to me. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Ashley, the wording. Even Tyler was like, yo, chill, dang. But Tyler started walking to that one. And finally, Garrett and Taylor have a final date at a lights and art projection museum, it seems. It actually kind of fits for them both. And they're so unproblematic at this point that their conversation takes a detour and they're talking about mustard not going in the fridge. I think Garrett said that and then Taylor's like, no, it's got to go in the fridge. But they're so very sweet together. It seems like they're overcoming a lot of obstacles together. Please, love is blind, do not surprise us. I want them to get married. Okay, please. Alrighty. So... The last scene we get in episode 11, two days until weddings, Ramses and Marissa, we get a check-in. Ramses got a little blanket covered over his shoulder, sitting on the edge of the bed, looking so distraught. Marissa walks out. She's definitely been crying, okay? Now, it seems like they got into an argument, again, off camera. So we just don't know what happened, but we get a little bit of context here. Ramses apparently spoke to some people, maybe his friends, and is beginning to get cold feet, like I joked about earlier. 
Now, Marissa says, you shouldn't be listening to other people, especially if those people are giving bad advice, because you should be taking advice from people who you trade places with. She didn't say that on us part, but that is a good rule of thumb. Now, she's imploring him, please think of our future together. And he's not having it. And he looks so completely out of it. And he's about to speak and then cut to black. And that's the end of week three for Love is Blind season seven. Now, next week again is the finale episode 12, Weddings. I'll be covering it right here on the channel, so go ahead and get subscribed so you don't miss out. And let me know down below in the comments, do y'all think Marissa and Ramses make it? And who do you think is going to end up getting married at the altar? Because after this week, it's Garrett and Taylor. I'll, I'll save my predictions for the video next week. I don't want to get into too much of it. But y'all, that's it. <laughs> We're done with week three. This has actually been a very... I would say enjoyable season so far week one is the outlier but two and three pretty good but i need to know from you guys which moment made y'all fall out because <laughs> there are some things here that oh my gosh now y'all that was fun again same time same place next week episode 12 weddings but i'll be dropping a predictions video before that because i love to sort of chat with you about that and then i'll watch the finale after that Alrighty, y'all well again thanks so much for watching god bless you guys and I'll catch you at the next screening. <laughs>